Hello and welcome to PlayStation Grenade. The battle royale genre has become huge business and everyone is jumping on the bandwagon. Minecraft, Hunger Games, Armour 2 and Rust popularised as far back as 2012. PUBG and Fortnite rule the world at the moment, but I've found more than 30 titles which want to grab top spot in the battle royale table. Don't worry though, I've narrowed it down to 12, which I think could take you away from your current favourite. And by the way, 8 of these titles are going to be completely free to play. Let's start with Realm Royale, which is making huge waves over on the PC. What makes this one slightly different from Fortnite is the class system. It's more like if Overwatch and Fortnite had an illegitimate child. Realm Royale is still 100 people dropping from the sky and fighting in an ever shrinking circle, but the inclusion of character abilities changes up encounters, as the five main classes of Mage, Engineer, Hunter, Assassin and Warrior will require slightly different tactics to overcome. On top of that, there's a crafting system. There are even mounts to travel faster across the map. And I'm sure there'll be skins to purchase to ride on top of a giraffe or a velociraptor, hopefully anyway. And the best part of all, who needs a glider when you can land like a superhero? As I'm writing this, Realm Royale is in closed beta on the PS4. So as soon as it's released, I'll throw together a beginner's guide. Here's one I've been dying to talk about for ages. Dying Light is trying its hand at Battle Royale, and it's going to be completely free. Now all the official reveals are out of the way, I can tell you a few more details about Dying Light Bad Blood. This is set in first person and involves huge amounts of parkour elements in a city filled with AI zombies. Instead of 100 players fighting to the death, Dying Light Bad Blood pits 12 people against each other who must escape before nightfall. We can kill everyone we see, but the objective is to find samples in the world. The person who gets the right amount gets the last seat on the escape chopper. Will you collect enough on your own, or will you wait to take the samples from other players? Dying Light will begin on PC as a founder's purchase, but will come to all formats completely for free. What do you think to first person parkour in Battle Royale? I'll admit it, I am super intrigued by this one. Battle Royale has had such an impact on gamers that even Call of Duty Black Ops 4 is releasing a version of BR. This is Call of Duty Battle Royale. This is Blackout Mode. It will completely focus on what Call of Duty is renowned for, the shooting mechanics and controls, the stylized cinematic look, and best of all, there will be 10 years of history on a single map with references to modern warfare, to ghosts, and of course the Black Ops series. And it gets even better as vehicles have been confirmed. We'll get our first chance to play during the PS4 beta on September the 10th, and if I get myself a key, I'll upload my thoughts very soon. Quickly, I'd like to include H1Z1. I know it's been here since the beginning, but it's now fully released on PS4 and offers the same style battle pass as Fortnite at a lower price. If you prefer more boots on the ground and a little more gritty realism, I recommend jumping back into H1Z1. Do you know how hard it is to say H1Z1 instead of H1Z1? It's bloody ridiculously hard. Moving on. Have you heard of SOS? It's currently free to play on PC, but the devs have outlined their desire to bring SOS to consoles ASAP. The premise is a little different to Fortnite, as 32 players, or contestants rather, start on Lacuna Island and search for relics. Another twist involves viewers making decisions to affect the island of their favourite streamer. But in my eyes, the best thing of all is the proximity chat, which allows fellow contestants to talk to one another, adding the possibility of being tricked and literally backstabbed. The game is having huge issues at the moment, trying to realise if it's a fully fledged battle royale title, or if it wants to keep the original content of of the game which was about betrayal and those relics we mentioned. Just like Dying Lights, the island is filled with creatures that can infect and brutalise you, so an allegiance, however fragile, may be the best course of action. Back in 2012, Minecraft was modded to include a Hunger Games mode, which is arguably the birth of the battle royale genre. The irony here is that the Hunger Games, the book series and the movies, directly rip off ideas from Battle Royale, which is a brilliant film in its own right. I demand you go watch it now if you haven't already. Before I get too sidetracked, let's go back to the point that Minecraft Hunger Games was so inspirational that six years later, we have survival games battle royale. 
As always, the premise is to fight and survive, but the world is dynamically created, causing everyone to be in the same position of not knowing the map straight away. Essentially, this prevents new players from being outsmarted by the terrain. At present, the project is in early access on Steam and supports up to 64 players. Another game with a similar approach to graphical fidelity is Rec Royale, a free-to-play virtual reality take on Battle Royale. This is much smaller than 100 players, in fact, it's only 16, but you'd be surprised how scary it is to know someone could be behind you at any moment, ready to hit you over the head with a frying pan. Let's look at Horizon Source. It's another Steam title with huge ambitions. Yet again, it's free to play and starts with 100 players dropping towards an abandoned island. Horizon Source, just like Realm Royale, has distinctive heroes with unique weapons and skills to utilize. There's the typical scavenging element, but even Fortnite's building feature makes it over to Horizon Source, allowing fortresses and obstacles to be erected. So if other games were a mix of Overwatch and Fortnite, this one would be a mix of Fortnite and and Realm Royale. It's quite interesting how they put it all together, so definitely give it a look. We can take this one step further though with a mobile game you may want to consider. This is Fortcraft. As the name suggests, this is almost the exact same game as Fortnite. The devs made this title available to Android players before Fortnite were able to move across to Android. Whether it's still thriving when Fortnite completely takes over the Android phone and tablet scene is yet to be known. But for a less polished version of Fortnite Mobile, this is the game for you. I can't see this staying around for very long because it's so identical it's frightening. Epic Games will probably sue them into closure very soon. Oh, here's a good one. Imagine Battle Royale and Mad Max mixed together. Sounds pretty damn good, doesn't it? Fractured Lands is attempting to do this, but at present it's in such an early state of development, the game is so far from completion. What stands out to me is the post-apocalyptic visuals and the armoured cars you travel in. The cars themselves are your starting point and they can be upgraded such as thrusters to make you go quicker or even vertical thrusters to bunny hop over obstacles. The item management here resembles PUBG and so does the gameplay. Fractured Land stands out from the other competitors in the battle royale scene so let's cross our fingers and hope that they develop this into a top tier battle royale title. all hostile engagement and prepare for battle royale match transport in five four three two one Next, we have Islands of Nine Battle Royale. Most aspects are identical to your favourite BR games, with a few tweaks such as the toxic gas area being replaced with a plasma field, and instead of the abandoned island being on Earth, it's instead on an alien planet. The visuals here look freaking gorgeous, which should attract players that find Fortnite's art style a little too childlike. Work has finally begun on a console version of Islands of Nine, but is accessible right now on Steam for you PC players. Welcome to the Dome, And finally, a game with a huge amount of potential is the Darwin Project. Again, this one will take time to come to console. From what we've seen of the PC version, the Darwin Project is far more unique than any of the other titles on the list. With an impending ice age about to rock the world, it's time for survival of the fittest, hence the name Darwin in the title. Not only will you be facing other players in the Darwin Project, you'll be fighting the wilderness and the enclosing weather. Something as simple as lighting a fire for a heat will allow others to track your position, and tracking is a pivotal part of the game. Looking for footprints or any other telltale signs that someone has been here before you allow us to pursue players, but we're always leaving our own trail behind us for other players to follow. It perfectly pushes survival and the battle between predator and prey. At present, the Darwin project is free to play on Steam, and judging by the branding lately, this looks to be picked up by Microsoft, so we may not see it on PS4 at first. I'll let you know when I find out more information. So there we have it, a dozen Battle Royale games that want your attention. What do you think? Will anything pull you away from Fortnite? Oh, and keep in mind, eight of these games will be free to play, so there's no reason to ignore them. Give them a download and see what you think. They'll be dropping as soon as this month, up to about a year away. So there's something new to play almost every single month in the Battle Royale genre. Anyway, I'm Adam from PlayStation Grenade. It's been a bloody pleasure. Like always, I'll see you next time. <laughs>